This is a video saying that I'm smart, and so I'm gonna watch it. Jesus, that was Oh, bad. Esmond Gold, the king of nerds and the successful businessman whom I sincerely admire. I have never been an ultra fan of Esmond and have never been writing anything in his stream chat, but I have been watching his content for more than seven years now. I am fascinated by what this dude has achieved. He literally started from his mom's house attic and now owns numerous successful businesses and, well, still lives in the attic. I genuinely think that this yeah. guy had a positive impact on my life and my hobby of content creation, and that is why I decided to film this video See, look at this this is this is one of the times whenever i realize like look at that stomach on my life that's disgusting that's awful it's fucking it's it's absolutely filthy and my hobby of content creation and that is why i decided to film mm -hmm. this video to share my amazement and respect for esmond gold i started watching esmond gold back in 2017 yeah. well because i played and loved world of warcraft uh -oh. i was watching lots of dudes who filmed videos about wow and most of them had better editing scripts video quality and sound than esmond yet not one of them was as entertaining as esmond gold it looked like he wasn't even trying that hard he was just turning on the stream sitting in his messy room and doing what he knows best playing. people always told me that i should stream back in like cataclysm in like 2010 2011 they're like you really need to start streaming people a lot of people would watch you and i said streaming was for and i can't say that word anymore um that was my opinion of it and then whenever i realized that i could get groups while streaming and people would give me money then I started streaming. Wow. He didn't care about how he looked like. He wasn't showering for weeks and months. Oh, and actually, that's not true. Um, I would, uh, if you go back to my 2016 VODs, I actually would cover my face every single time that I would smile, like I'm Saikuno or something, but it's because I didn't have any teeth over here because I didn't want people to see that. It seemed like he never had any particular mm -hmm. script or ideas for his videos or stream, yet he was a real master of World of Warcraft. I he used knew to be everything very good at the about game. the game and most yep. importantly, he loved the game. I always I was fascinated by how he remembered where every part of the armor set was coming from when rating transmogs in the competitions mm -hmm. he was running and how he knew literally everything about every aspect of the game. Besides that, I learned how he knew set was coming from when rating transmogs in the competitions he was running and how he knew literally everything just just so you guys know that's the venthyr tabard those shoulders are from next 25 man that sword is from uh black wing descent in cataclysm that's the reforged ashkandi uh these legs and boots are actually the tin man version of the old war death knight gear that dropped, uh, you know, obviously in Wrath of the Lich King. About and every aspect really the, of the obviously game. Obviously the mount is, of course, Midnight, Reigns of Midnight. Besides that, I was actually Dark shocked by about. the look of his room. One of the first Esmond Gold videos I watched was a Lair video, which is quite amazing, as you might know. Pretty much every influencer nowadays is trying to show you how rich and cool he or she is. Esmond is not one of them. Despite becoming popular and making his big bucks, he is still sitting in the same room, drinking Dr. Pepper in a white short from Costco <laughs> or Walmart. No brands, no fancy cars, nothing. Oh, I like. did buy this one at Academy. I went there with my dad that and i truly think that this is amazing however for some yeah. time now i was wondering whether this is just an image he's creating for people to believe in or is it his what real happened life? to these nuggets life and i actually want to believe that this i is actually oh it's real esmond goes first right and so uh i love the um collective uh disgust and despair that Twitter and the greater internet has come to at the fact that it's all real. I remember uh, Emmy was going to come over and clean up one of the rooms in my house as like a stream thing. And I told her, I said, you don't really know me that well, but Every bad story you've ever heard is true. And then the stream never happened. Do the videos date back to 2008. The very first video is called The Rat, where Esmond is, well, 
Catching the Rat. The other old school videos depict Esmond with close friends. I used to break things over my head regularly in order to uh, practice having fun and of course World of Warcraft videos. Yep. However, how did he go from there to becoming one of the most popular streamers in the entire world? The dude was a real hardcore fan of World of Warcraft mm -hmm. and one of the first to make guides. So yep. his YouTube videos about WoW started to become... Well, a lot of people made guides, but the problem is that most of the people that made guides were fucking stupid and they were bad at the game. So whenever I made guides and I was like one of the best players in the game, I had all the achievement points. I knew more about the game than everybody else put together. I could make the best guides because I was the best player. That's just how it is. Popular. However, I think that his success wasn't only due to his professionalism in the it's game, but also due to him having a talent for storytelling. He is a very talented speaker. He can talk about the games for hours and be of interest to people who have never even played this particular game. This is proved by millions of views on his video series called The True Story of Ed. Yeah, why you would not like the True Story of Asmuka? I love that. Um, that. That's something that you get better at doing over time. Like, if you go back and you watch my videos from whenever I was like 12, they're really not very good. If you go back and you watch my videos from whenever I was like 15 or 18, not very good. And then over time, I got better at doing videos. So like, I don't want anybody to think that I like spawned in and I was good at talking on camera immediately. Like I started doing it whenever I was like, I, I did it as soon as I could. I, I think I started recording and making content with like a, a camera like a, a video camera, like not a big one, but like the small one in like 1998, maybe 1999. And then I, I was like eight or nine years old at the time. And then I got a video camera at like 10 or 11. And then I started recording all the time. And I was uploading onto, onto the internet at like 14 years old in 2004. Gold. Under this video, so you can read lots of comments of people saying yeah. they loved the video, yet have never played World of Warcraft themselves. Mm -hmm. That is exactly the thing which brought success to his streams. He was playing WoW, but talking about everything. Politics, real life, difficulties oh, yeah. people face, jokes, and internet drama. So despite being a World of Warcraft streamer, he always has been talking about something else too, thus turning his stream into a talk show with him being the one and only host. When when watching his streams and videos, I started to notice that he is never silent. So he's... Yeah, that definitely is true. And I wasn't really the one and only host. I mean, like, having McConnell on all the time was great. Like, whenever we would stream in, like, uh, WAD and, like, we need to stream PUBG, like, McConnell, like, I feel like made a lot of my streams. Like, he absolutely did. Like, even, for example, like, the Sunken Temple stream that we did, like, last week, I feel like that was really good because of McConnell. And I think, like, it's not, it, like, it, obviously McConnell's, like, probably, like, the most popular one, right? Everybody knows, but, like, s and, like, other guys that I play with, too. I feel like that can really kind of uh, be a multiplier for content. Literally commenting on every action he's performing in the game, and he's doing it This was crazy, like by the way. This was crazy. Why couldn't they get out of the red thing? It was so easy. Like, just get out of the red Cosmic Smash. Just don't stand in it. I, I, dude, Every it's making second, me mad just looking at never it. never silent. It doesn't look like a big deal when you are just watching the streams yeah. or videos. However, I as a content creator know how hard it could be. Despite that, the dude is doing it for hours and hours without stopping. It I used to actually hurt my throat a lot to talk all the time. And I actually wouldn't talk to almost anyone at all uh, off stream. And I remember, like, I would have, like, a girlfriend that would want to call me. And I'm like, I can't talk. I'm, you know, I'm on cooldown. And she would just be fucking, like... Like, I, I had a girlfriend, like, and in, like, the same, like, inside of, like, my phone messages. Like, I love you and I hate you would be in the same frame. Yeah. And I would say that there are not many streamers that are on the same level as him. So this thing most certainly makes That's him one of the things that I really respect and like a lot about a lot of the new guys like Jinxie and Queso and Kai is that they focus primarily on being entertaining and bringing value to the stream and making people have a good time. 
because whenever I first started streaming, one of the reasons why I like grew a lot more than other WoW content creators is because other WoW content creators thought that the content was the game. And I realized very early on that like, this is just really not the game. The, the game is boring. Like what the fuck of people aren't going to watch this. And so like, I tried to actually like entertain people by being funny and telling jokes and you know, all that stuff. So I, I but that's debatable to go with you. Well, like you might not like what they're doing, but I, I really respect somebody who tries to put on a great show. Like they're not just sitting there and clocking in and playing video games. I think that is the most boring type of stream ever. Oh, I'm going to turn on my stream and play video games. Wow. Why would anybody want to see that? Successful. Despite living in the attic and sometimes looking like a homeless man, Esmongold's life is what lots of people envy. Most yeah. of Esmongold's viewers are grown up men in their 20s and 30s, and most of them have responsibilities, families, yeah. full time jobs, and credits to pay for. Despite most people preferring to have a mortgage, a nice house, and a car, all of them remember their childhood. The time when they didn't have to worry about going to work or having any responsibilities, mm -hmm. the time when the most important thing they had in their life was World of Warcraft raid bosses and mounts to farm. So now people live viciously through Asmongold as they wish. It means they vicariously, and he's right. I think that a lot of people like that a lot with my stream. It's like my stream is like a time capsule in a way. Because uh, I'll be honest, the world has changed and I've stayed the same. I'm still the same as I've always been. And, uh, you know, I think people can come back and. You know, you look at my streams from eight years ago and like, yes, I'm different, but I'm also not that different could sit around and play WoW all day and get paid for it. That is the way for people to escape oh their formal, serious and responsible lives. They look at a dude who is just playing games, eating junk food and having fun, similarly to what they did yeah. when they were young exactly. and happy. Despite becoming popular because of World of Warcraft, Esmongold went away from it. He learned how to farm views with reaction content, so he is mm -hmm. reacting to everything. I remember the time when the legal oh dispute God. between Johnny Depp and Dumber Heard was the thing man Esmongold farmed this drama with numerous videos it was crazy how hard we farmed this like this is i have never farmed anything harder than this yet this is the current record on this thing and it's the same for every other drama on the internet he is there to film it and react i know to i it. actually this is gonna sound like borderline psychopathic but I actually get really sad whenever drama happens that involves me or involves people around me that I can't talk about. And I'll even get jealous of other content creators that get to farm my drama. Like, I'll, like, watch Destiny and I'll see Destiny farming my drama and I'll be like, you motherfucker, I want to do this. I can't do this, but you can fuck. I'll be so mad. <laughs> I'm so jealous. He's making 30 minutes long videos so toxic, reacting yes. to 5 minute original videos. By doing yeah. it, he is not only helping himself making money from YouTube ads, but is also supporting some small content creators by watching their mm -hmm. content and thus promoting it. I think that there are several reasons why people like watching Gasman Gold reactions to other people's videos. The first one is very obvious. People like to feel as if they are watching this content with a friend who is there to share a oh, thought shit. or two about the content. However, yeah. another thing which I find very interesting about Esmongold's reaction videos is that he is very rational and that is why a lot of men like him. On the one hand, he doesn't behave like any- That's why, um, you know, again, emphasis on the men part, uh, there are no girls that watch this stream, basically. Uh, this is a male space. It is crazy how deep the dynamic is. Like a crazy fucking percentage. Date. On the other, he is not a woke feminist and is not supporting ultra-left people. He is reasonable and doesn't go to the extremes, thus very appealing to the men from 20 to 30 years of age. Finally, well, I think also another reason is that, like my, like if I talk about something in politics or something like that, uh, I'll usually have a perspective that I at least try to reason out. So people might disagree with what my conclusion is, but usually people don't disagree with what my argumentation or how I got to the conclusion. 
And so that that definitely happens a lot. And I, I have people shit on me for that all the time. But at the end of the day, I mean, I, I think I, I try to, like with the videos, what I try to do the most of is I try to be as fair as I can be and as authentic as I can be. And that gets me into a lot of trouble. Like, uh, I, I'll say something that a lot of people won't like to hear. And yeah, they'll get really mad. But at the end of the day, if you're watching my stream, you're going to get my opinion. And that's going to be something that's good or bad. Go off actual information. Yeah, like the reason why is that, um, like, I I'm not a very emotional person, really. And so whenever something happens, like, I usually don't, this is going to sound bad, but like, I usually don't really give a fuck about it a lot, right? Like, I don't really have like a personal emotional investment into it. So I can look at it from an outsider's perspective and I can not really like have a vested interest in the outcome of a conversation. You're a sociopath? Well, I mean, there are, I, I don't know if I am or not, right? I mean, I, I, if somebody wants to call me that, that's fine. If not, it, it's not, it, it doesn't matter to me. But um, my point is that I'm able to disconnect myself from things and look at it from at least a, a pretty biased, pers uh, unbiased perspective, I mean. He understands this group of men. He is telling things that we all like and agree on. He understands the struggle of life. He is not delusional and is not telling people that they should live like he is living. He understands yeah. that most of his viewers have a 9 to 5 and a family to feed. So he is talking about very relatable things such as high prices in the McDonald's and Wendy's and how the gas is expensive. He is humble man, talking about humble things that are important to most of his viewers and that is why they... It's one of the reasons why I don't really change a lot of things in my life is that I think that once you start living like a rich person, you uh, you won't really be able to understand the experiences of a person who's not in that position. And also, like you don't have to be rich to know that, like you know, like I, I'm I'm good at remembering numbers, right? And so like I'll think about like what the average salary is somewhere. And then I'll know like what the poverty line is. And then I'll get my property taxes and it'll be $10,000. And I'll think to myself, oh my God, how could any normal person afford this? Like, it, it's actually crazy to me that like whenever I, because like the way that I live is, uh, you know, I, I live kind of like an animal, uh, you know, absolutely. But there's other things that I actually think that I wish other people would do too. Like, you don't need to buy a new phone every year. You don't need to buy uh, new clothes all the time. You, you don't need to buy a new car all the time. Uh, these things don't really matter. Having an expensive house, designer clothes, like, these, aren't, these, are, these don't matter, right? And uh, I, I think that that's, like, that's a good thing to promote. And I wish that more people did that. I think there's a lot of like influencers and content creators who want to become celebrities, but I don't think that they want to become celeb. They don't want, they want to be celebrities. They don't want to do something that earns them the status of being a celebrity. Like for example, um, you know, Keanu Reeves is a celebrity because he's an amazing actor and he has been for 30 years. Like there's a lot of people that want to kind of appoint themselves as a position of like, you know, because you look at somebody like Kim Kardashian, right? It's like she's, you know, famous because she's really hot, basically. And, uh, you know, they want to put themselves in that position rather than actually trying to earn any sort of like real credibility for anything. Uh, is down to, down to earth? I mean, I, I mean, I, I, I think I am, right? With, with a lot of things, I, I definitely think I am. A lot of rich people are overly ambitious about the material. And also like, this is another big problem that a lot of people have, and this is especially true with people that are uh, rich. She hot? Is Kim Kardashian hot? I think she's ridiculously fucking hot. But that's another another like I, we don't need to talk about that. But yes, absolutely. Uh, a lot of people like to they like to think that they earned and they deserve to be in the place in life that they are in. And I think this is a big problem that a lot of people on like in in society have is because like people are constantly fed a lot of like guilt messaging where it's like oh you should feel bad for the fact that you are uh you know white or you're a man or you know you have this privilege or you have that privilege or you have a job and you know you don't know what it's like to be like a poor person whereas like for me um you know like 
if I was rich because I stole a bunch of money, I would be happy because I'd have a bunch of money. I think that people focus too much on the approval of like greater society. And because of that, they constantly need to like rationalize and validate themselves. Whereas people can't enjoy like, you know, what they have just for what it is. They have to like constantly look for people patting them on the back for it. And I find that to be very uh, exhausting. And I think it's pathetic, to be honest love him so much sometimes without even realizing it despite being humble and, and it's like here, here's another thing right rich people problems aren't real problems that's what somebody says well rich people's problems are absolutely real problems like everybody's problems are real problems but the reality is that i know that you don't care about my problems and to be honest with you i don't care about yours either and that's okay it, it and, and like I don't I don't need to prove to somebody like oh no my problems are real or anything like that because that again that comes from a place of narcissism. You want other people to feel the way that you feel. You want to be seen. You want to be heard. The world doesn't have an obligation to listen. And I I think being able to get like internal validation, if you can do that, you'll you'll solve like so many problems in your life and it's so hard for people to do which real problems are everyone's problem unfortunately well like if somebody doesn't approve of what you're doing why would it matter think about it like that what like for example like if somebody doesn't like what i'm doing why would i care what they think it doesn't matter like what it really doesn't like now there will be some people that like i'll listen to them and i'll agree with them but it's not because they said it, it's because I agree with it. Thoughts on conspicuous consumption? Well, I think a lot of people engage in that too much. And I think that streamers do that and other influencers do that in order to parade themselves around as pseudo-celebrities. I find it to be exhausting. If uh, expensive things make you happy, then you should do those things. You should absolutely, right? Uh, but a lot of people, it's like an endless abyss, right? Where, like, you, you start trying to pursue something to, uh, you know, it's like, oh, I need to, like, get, have this thing. I need to have that thing. And then, like, you get it, and then you need something else. And then you need something else. So, like, very rarely do people buy something, and then it actually is the missing puzzle piece and the, you know, their jigsaw puzzle of their life. Very rarely is, is that the case. In the image of a nerd, Esmangold seems to be a very talented and successful businessman. I didn't conduct a throughout research, so I will talk only about the businesses of Esmangold I naturally know about from watching his content. First and foremost, he is a co-founder and co-owner of the streaming, gaming and content creation organization yeah. One True King, referred to as OTK. That is pretty yeah. much an organization that has been described by its members as media production company and a lifestyle brand. Esmangold, together with his friends and other fellow content creators, Creators from OTK are also selling their merchandise. Besides that, Esmangold owns a computer assembly business called Starch for Systems. I, I'm a co-owner, to be fair. Like, there's a lot of other people that are owning it, and I don't run the business. Uh, you know, like the people at Starforge run the business. You can buy a PC designed yeah. for your specific needs and have it delivered to your home, as far as I understand, to pretty much any place on the planet. The most interesting thing is that the business seems to be very successful and its marketing is just on another level. Since it We, uh, Starforge is extremely successful. Uh, we're doing great and it's awesome. It's successfully advertised by yeah. Esmongold and other streamers, so the PR group is pretty strong there. Moreover, Esmongold owns a game development company called Matt Mushroom. They are working Co with indie again. game developers to make their games bigger by assisting them, providing yeah. feedback during development, leveraging, advertising it, as well as building social media presence. Last but not least is the Stay Connect podcast, which mm -hmm. I have been listening to from the very first episode. Esmongold and two fellows from OTK are yeah, public- it, it's a, it's a a big risk to do all the things that I did but in my perspective like it's a risk if you don't know what you're doing and you're not sure that you're gonna come out ahead I don't view it as a risk because I am pretty confident that I can make certain things go well right so it's like for somebody else it might be a risk for me I don't really view it as a risk I think the reason why is that 
Like, obviously, like, you know, I went to business school and everything, but that's not really the reason. I, I think it's because it's kind of like what, you know, we watch that other video and it's people that are talking all the time about like, oh, people are giving bad reviews to our product and they, they view it as like, these people are the enemy. Like, this is, it's just like a lot of people's perspective on business is really bad. And a lot of people's perspectives on, uh, I guess, like selling a product is also really bad. It's it's actually awful. Like I'm gonna be honest. Like it is crazy bad. Publishing a weekly podcast, which is getting on average 150,000 views per episode, which is pretty impressive yeah. considering the. Somebody says, "Uh, you're a huge streamer with massive audience. Your viewers are by your toenails." So you're right about that, but that's not really true with computers, because computers cost a lot of money. Yeah, I can probably get people to buy a $15 shirt. Sure, but. Can I get people to buy a $2,500 computer? Well, I've got to have a good computer. The fact that guys mostly talk about video games, anime, and internet drama, which in reality is a pretty narrow segment. Yeah. To conclude all of that, Esmangold has numerous successful YouTube channels which post about 8 videos every day. A Twitch channel and work, a computer assembly business, game yeah. dev company, and the podcast. And all of that has been achieved literally from the attic of the house. If that is Yeah, I mean, I usually, um, you know, I don't really even take days off, right? I mean, you guys look at my, if you look at my statistics on Twitch, um, I don't really even take days off. Uh, you know, I will, you know, start working and, you know, some days I'll start and I'll do my stream and then I'll just immediately start doing something else. And like, I'll be doing it until like four in the morning sometimes. And, and then I'll wake up and, and like, that's, that's just what I do. I mean, and, and it's like, yeah, that's, I, I, I'm glad. I'm happy. When are you going to take a vacation? I'm taking a vacation right now. I like streaming. I know this might sound crazy because like a lot of people on Twitch for some reason hate streaming. And I did whenever I was on my main channel and I realized that that's what I was doing. And so I stopped doing it on the main channel because it was just unhealthy for me mentally. That's why I stream all the time. Fuck. But you don't get burned out. I used, I, I had like a, like a, a cyclical cycle, right? Where like, oh, cyclical cycle, <laughs> uh, where like I would take really long breaks from streaming and then come back. Streaming is a hard job, well now. Well, streaming isn't really a hard job, but being good at it is. And if you think that it's easy, you know who else thought it was easy? I did. And look at me now. So if you really think that, go out and do it and prove it. Like, I, yeah, I mean, I, I like, if you think that my job is easy, and what I do is easy, then go do it. I don't, it doesn't matter to me. Like if somebody thinks that, like, I don't need to justify how hard it is. Who cares? Like it, it doesn't like, that doesn't like, why? W what is it? Did we not just watch a Chinese streamer video a few days ago? Like 99% of streamers can't make a living. Most people lose. That's just how it is. Not impressive i don't know what is remember the guy has never finished university but he's clearly a great businessman who knows how to develop and grow teams delegate work and build companies one after the other the main thing i want to it's say with this video, video is that, that this guy is a I genius think. in one way or another and actually is a great example for all of the young men out there he proved i i think it's like i mean i think that there are some things that i'm very smart at doing and other things that i'm not necessarily as smart as doing but one thing that, like, this is one thing I learned about with, like, uh, being at school, is that I wouldn't be very good at, like, doing some things in math, but I could memorize every single outcome that could happen and then just do it on the test without showing work. And so it's, like, at a certain point, if you are so good at one thing, you can completely offset being garbage at something else that you shouldn't be fancy and rich looking in order to be wholesome and popular. He is an example of the person who was just doing something he loved and mm -hmm. became successful. I bet most of us want to do something similar with our lives, so we have a lot to learn from the true king of nerds, the Asmongold. Well, I, I mean, I appreciate the video. It's a great video. I mean, I, yeah, I, I really do. I mean, I would say this, right, is that another reason why I'm successful is because I show up. 
I show up every time. I stream every day. I focus on trying to at least make content that is to some degree compelling. And I do my best to to be there. And, you know, I have a bad day. Too bad. I have a good day. Great. Like, there are a lot of days. Like, for example, like, my dad was like, uh, I mean, like, he was so sick. Like, he, uh, you know, was like, like writing out a will like it was really really bad i came home i you know like kind of decompressed from that for like an hour and then i went live every night that's it same thing after like my mom uh that's just how it is and i i think being resilient and being able to like being able to like take the way that you feel out of the like for streaming there are great times to treat something like a job and there's great times to treat it like a hobby. And sometimes it's good to treat it like a job. You go in and you do the work. There's the video, by the way. Give it a like. This is a, it's a good video. It's a great video. It's all about me. Of course it's great. And so, uh, yeah, that that's that's the way that I see it. Priorities, yeah. And uh, if Grandma once said, it is what it is. Yeah, exactly. And, like, that's kind of, like, the way that, like, I was raised in general. Is like, my dad, uh, my dad's the kind of dad that... Um, you know, I'd get a 97 and he'd ask, what'd you miss? You know, he's telling me I'm still not doing enough work now. Like, I need to be doing more. He's like, oh, why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing that? You should do this. Why aren't you like, I mean, this is just all, always how it is. And so, uh, you know, like, uh, I do appreciate authentic, truthful to yourself. Yeah, as much as I can, is you wrong? Well, like, I, I come from a, a, like, it's kind of a weird thing because I live with my mom and I grew up like not, I mean, like not like super, super poor, but like, you know, she would usually make uh, money under the poverty line every year. But like, you know, my dad's side of the family is actually like a very, very wealthy uh, German family. And so like, that's kind of like where he came from. And, you know, uh, that that's the way everybody else on like, you know, his side of the family is like most parents are like that. Yeah. Oh, shit. I'm good. Uh, fucking chair. I messed that up. And so it's a dad thing. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. But uh, my dad beat me with an electrical cord. My dad never hit me. Uh, not once in my life. Uh, never hit me. Never did anything like that aggressive to me at all. He was a, you know, a, a combat uh, veteran in, uh, what do you call it, Vietnam. Like, decorated, like, war veteran. He gets, like, a free license plate because of it. Uh, so, like, yeah. And he never felt the need to hit me for anything. And so uh, it was not an issue. Did he roast you? He would roast me. He definitely would. Hey, mom? Oh, my mom? I mean, like, she was... My mom was, like, basically okay with me doing anything. Like, she was, like, very, like, kind of, uh... Um... Like, it, if I told my mom, I'm going to... I'm gonna just, like, I'm gonna just stay home for this semester and play World of Warcraft, she'd be like, yep. You know, like, she was just supportive of anything that I would do. Yeah, she was the cool parent. Yeah, yeah, she was. And, and you know, it was good to have that. It really was. You also help small creators, and that's great. Well, yeah, sometimes I do. I mean, sometimes I can, if if it's possible. Uh, Semi-liberal upbringing. Um, you know, again, like, you know, big surprise. My, uh, you know, very wealthy, uh, you know, uh, German family is primarily very conservative. Like, extremely conservative. Uh, my dad is actually, uh, I would say, like, He's he's pretty liberal with a lot of stuff. And uh, I guess, like, my mom is, like, kind of half and half. And they fight in World War II? Yeah, oh, yeah, of course. Like, uh, yeah, both of my, like, grandfathers were, like, pilots in World War II. And, uh, yeah, uh, like, same with World War I and, and shit like that, too. So you got Ying Yang there? Well, no, my mom was, like, very conservative, too. Like, she was, she was based, okay? Like, uh... She would she would say some crazy shit. Yeah, which side? Oh, our side. Yeah, yeah, no, no, our, our side for sure. 